Hi everybody, this is Coach Erin Gino here and today I'm going to show you a little bit about um, basketball dribbling. I'm really excited that this year we get to do basketball um, as a sport as you each are receiving a basketball um, and dribbling is one of the most important components of basketball. So for today's lesson you just are going to need a basketball. There are some options where you might need some little obstacles. You can use a shoe, you can use a water bottle, things like that, um, but that's all you should need for today. Again, dribbling is a really important part of the game. Um, so that's why it's important to be able to practice your dribbling because without dribbling you really aren't going to be able to shoot really well or pass really well. It's just one of the big um, parts of the game. So for today, my demonstration ball will not have bells in it. You all have a ball with bells in it. Um, so you should just listen mostly to the bouncing of the ball and not necessarily listen for the bells because my ball does not have them in it. So I hope you enjoy this video. Um, following this, you will hear a bunch of different exercises. Um, it's recommended that you watch the demonstration, listen to the explanation, and then have somebody push pause in the video. You go ahead and try it for a minute or two, and then press play and move on to the next exercise. The end has some um, more difficult challenges. Um, there's also some at the end that would help you if you are a more beginner, um, that are more basic uh, dribbling exercises. But I hope that you enjoy this, and let me know if you have any questions. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that your basketball is properly inflated. When you are inflating your basketball, it might get deflated when it's shipping to you, so you're going to want to check this first. When you squeeze the basketball, it should be pretty hard. Um, my ball, I could push it in a little bit easy. That means it's a little bit deflated, um, but make sure you're, and I don't have a pump, but make sure yours is fully pumped up. Uh, when you inflate a basketball, if you hold it out in front of you with two hands and then simply just remove your hands and let the ball go, it should bounce on the ground and bounce up to about your waist area. So I'm going to try that now. Yeah, mine bounces a little bit low, um, but for you, just make sure it bounces to about your waist height and you will be good to go for this lesson. Okay, this next series of exercises is going to be different ball handling, but not necessarily dribbling. I'm going to do a demonstration and I'm going to ex explain it to you. And then I want you to pause the video after each one and go ahead and try it on your own for a minute and then come back and try the next activity. Um, so the first one is gonna be called around your head. You are simply just going to take the ball from one hand to the other while moving it around your head. You can hear when my hand comes back on the ball and I'm just gonna try and go faster and faster, moving the ball around my head. Next one is gonna be called around your waist. It's simply the same thing. You're gonna just move the ball around your waist from one hand to the other as fast as you can, trying not to look down at the ball, just feeling where the ball is. You can go in both directions as well. Ball should stay mostly in your fingertips, and the better you get at this, the faster you can go. Okay, moving down the body, now we're gonna go around your knees. You're gonna wanna bend down a little bit, and you're simply just doing around your knees from one hand to the other. Again, keep your chest and your head up. You should not be looking down at the basketball. Um, you can go both directions with this as well. If you drop it, that's fine. Just go ahead and pick it up and go back around your knees again. Okay, the next one is just gonna be taps. So you're gonna hold the ball only using your fingertips above your head and you're just gonna simply tap it back and forth from one hand to the other. Okay, it's not really like a toss. You're just tapping the ball back. Um, the faster that you can do it, the better. You should be able to hear as it's touching my fingertips pretty fast. Again, if you look straight ahead of you, not at the ball, it's going to be even better for you. This one, you're going to stand with your legs pretty a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, bend your knees, and you are going to, going to be making a figure eight with the basketball around one leg, through the middle, around the other leg. So it will look something like this. Um, between my legs, around my left leg, back between my legs, around my right. And the ball is just going to have to simply go in the shape of an eight as if you were drawing an eight and your two legs were in the circles of the eight. Again, I'm going to look up and then do this as fast as I can. You don't want to just be bending over. You want to bend your knees in an athletic stance so you can keep your chest and your head up while you do this. Okay, the last exercise for the ball handling without necessarily dribbling is gonna be called the Spider-Man. This is more of an advanced one, um, so if you're feeling up to it, go ahead and try it. What you're gonna do, same thing as the figure eight, bend your knees, spread your legs pretty wide, and you're gonna put your left hand reaching behind your le left leg, 
right hand in front and you're gonna hold the basketball underneath between your legs. And really quickly, you're gonna have to release the basketball, switch so that your left hand is in front of your body, right hand reaches behind the body and you catch the ball before it bounces on the ground. So again, this is reaction time. The ball should stay pretty much right in between your legs the entire time it looks something like this. I'm gonna release, catch, release, catch, 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 catch. All right, after you've done those, I'm a little bit out of breath from those, um, now we're gonna move on to the dribbling uh, part. So dribbling in the basketball game, you're gonna wanna be able to dribble in a lot of different settings, different directions, different speeds, different heights. And the better that you can do all of those things, the better dribbler you will become. So just talking about the basic dribble, you are gonna use your finger pads, not necessarily your fingertips where your, not necessarily where your fingernails are, but the finger pads, um, kind of like the opposite side of your fingernails. So when you dribble, you are only gonna use one hand. You are gonna push the ball down toward the ground and it should bounce about to your waist level. Once it reaches your fingertips, you push it straight back down. You cannot put your hand underneath the ball to hold it in any way. Or if you do that, you are not allowed to continue dribbling after that. So first I want you to just mess around with both hands. Try dribbling with both your right and your left hand at about your waist level. Athletic stance, a little slight bend in the knees. Head should be staying up, not looking down at the ball. And if you notice, my ball does not have bells in it. Um, your ball will have bells in it, so it might be a little bit easier to tell where that ball is going to bounce up to. Okay, the next uh, dribbling modification we're gonna do is going to be a low ball dribble. This should help you just enhance your ball handling skills. Um, you might not necessarily use this in a game, but it's going to definitely help you when you um, have to dribble, you know, between defenders and things like that. So you're going to get in, in now and lower athletic stance, knees bent, eyes up. You might even want to put your non-dribbling hand out in front of you and you're going to dribble about to your knee level. So the ball should not really come any higher than your knees. It's going to bounce a lot faster, you will hear. I'm going to demonstrate now. And then you could try that with both hands. Okay, this is gonna be the crisscross criss -cross dribble or a crossover. Um, when you're crossing over, it's typically because you wanna get away from a defender or change direction. So in this one, you're definitely gonna to need to use both hands at the same time. You're gonna dribble twice with your right hand. You're gonna cross the ball over and it will cross your body. And then the next time you dribble it, it will be with your left hand. So I'm gonna dribble right, right, cross it over, left, left, cross it over, right, right, over, left, left, over, and you can keep that up. You can continue that at a lower level or a higher level. Obviously, the lower you get, the quicker the dribbles will be, the harder it will be. Um, but this, again, is called the crossover dribble. If you get really good at it, you can actually go crossover, 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 and without taking a dribble on each side in between. Okay, this one's gonna be a little more advanced. It's gonna be just dribbling between your legs. This is a move, again, to change directions to take out the fender. Um, for me, I feel more comfortable if my left leg's out in front, right leg's behind, and I go underneath um, from the right side of my body to the left side of my body. Um, to practice this, you could just stand still with your legs staggered and then just bounce the ball underneath. Um, as you get better, uh, you might be able to just conti uh, continue to walk, dribble in one dribble underneath each time. Um, this one again is more advanced, uh, but it's fun to just play around with. It's cool to be able to dribble between your legs. It's a nice new move. Okay, now that your dribbling skills have probably um, gotten better from some practice, we're gonna now practice moving and dribbling. So when you are dribbling in a game, it's very rare that you're just gonna have to dribble in a straight line. So when we practice dribbling, we practice a lot of zigzagging. So behind me, I have set up here a zigzag obstacle course. Um, I have a couple sneakers, a water bottle at the end. Everything's about five um, yards away from each other, but it's just a zigzag going away from me. So what I'm gonna do is start right here. I'm gonna dribble to the first shoe. I'm going to make a 45, 90 degree angle, go to the next shoe, next shoe, all the way down until I hit the end of the obstacle course. If you have enough usable vision to see these obstacles um, in front of you as you get closer to them, 
you can use whatever you have around you. Um, if you need uh, auditory cues, you could have maybe a family member stand there and clap when it's time to go to the next um, to the next obstacle. So here I go. It's good if you cross over at each obstacle, so you're not just going to want to stand up straight and then change direction. It's better to use a crossover, um, maybe a between the legs, even a behind the back move, but anything to change direction um, is going to be better because in a game you would have defense on you. Sometimes in a basketball game you will need to dribble down the court really fast. Maybe you have a breakaway, which means there's nobody else um, in front of you and you want to shoot a layup. So. One way to practice um, is also just called speed dribbling. When you are dribbling out in front of everybody, uh, you're probably going to want to throw the ball up a little bit far ahead of you and run after and chase it. Usually you dribble in this way, right hand, then left hand, right hand, then left hand. Um, but in this circumstance, if you have a big driveway or even a street that doesn't have any cars on it, you can practice your speed dribbling just in a straight um, line until you reach your target. So I'm just going to speed dribble toward the, toward the camera here. Okay, the next activity we're gonna do is called the chair dribble. Um, this is a good way for you to practice just your um, dribbling skills without anything else. You're not even standing up. So right now I have a folding chair. I am actually in the middle of the street, but I'm sitting kind of on the edge of the folding chair um, with my legs at a 90 degree angle toward the ground. And I'm just gonna simply practice dribbling the ball from about my knee level to the ground nice and quickly using my finger pads like we've talked about. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the crossover, but while you're sitting in the chair. So again, this is just gonna help you become better at the crossover dribble. So you're just gonna cross over right in front of where your feet are. And for an added challenge, you can try and even go underneath both of your legs, or you can kind of split your legs open and go underneath one leg. So first I'm gonna right now just do a crossover in front of my feet, looking up. And then if you want a challenge, you can go between your legs or underneath one leg. Take a couple dribbles if you need to gain control and then back under the leg. I hit my leg, it's okay. If you are more of a beginner to basketball and you've really never dribbled before and you're having difficulty um, maintaining a consistent dribble, um, we're gonna have a challenge for you and that's gonna be to keep increasing as um, to get as many dribbles as you can under control. So you're gonna first start off with one, just one dribble and a catch. Now you're on number two, so you're just gonna try and dribble, dribble, catch. Now we're on three. One, two, three, catch. And you're gonna keep trying to get as high as you can. If you lose control, you can stick on that number. You can start back at one, but just work your way up to get higher and higher. Okay, this next one is a more advanced exercise. Um, I'm not gonna be able to fully demonstrate this because I only have one basketball, but if you're somebody who has a spare basketball laying around, you could even try this with a soccer ball. Um, this is called the two ball dribble. There's a couple different things you can do with it. I'll demonstrate to the best of my ability without the second ball. Um, but the main two ones are you can do alternating dribbles with your right and left hand. So I'll demonstrate my left hand won't have a ball, but I'll just kind of push down and that will simulate when I would dribble. So alternating, you would go right, left, right, left, right, left. And trying to keep two balls under control is just going to advance um, your dribbling ability. And then you can also do it together. So you would just pound both balls down at the same time, keeping your head up. Um, sometimes the balls whack into each other and go flying, but um, this is a really good exercise for you to practice your dribbling with your non-dominant and dominant hand.